lovelies, my name is Tony, and welcome to my channel. The story is about um, one guy who has seven demons that live in his house and they each have varying parts of the story. And I want to give a special thanks to Drunk on Writing for writing this story and um, I found their story on Tumblr so you should go check out their um, their page and follow them, give them a big, you know, like. Um, so I really appreciate the fact that they let me do, um, that th th they're letting me read this story. So, we are going to get right into our story. There are seven spirits living in my home with me, and none of them pay rent. The first one makes the temperature rise in whatever room it is in until I have to shed my clothing just to be able to breathe. It speaks in a low voice in a way that makes goosebumps rise all over my body. Shivers and chills fill me in ways that it hasn't in so long, and the things that it says haunts my thoughts, replacing my usual ones with passionate bursts of the color red. The first one has a way of making me feel like it's inside of me, not in a possession sort of way, but as if it's inhabiting my body and making my blood rush all throughout. The second one mostly hangs out in the kitchen, so I don't see it as much. Unless it makes an unbelievable amount of noise, forcing me out of my room down and downstairs to confront it. Only to find food laid out on the table waiting for me, resembling the meals I haven't been able to make for myself in months. It is almost as if the second one knows that living off of a bag of chips might kill me. That heading down to the kitchen alone takes up so much energy that I can't make myself eat. The third one is my polar opposite in a way. It throws around the word deserve almost as much as I insist I don't. It knocks over things I hate, breaking them and forcing me to replace them and buy something else. Something I actually like. Something that will make me happy. I try to tell it that I don't know what that feels like anymore. That I don't know what actually makes me happy anymore. That I shouldn't be frivolous and wasteful. But I think in a past life, the third one was a lawyer, because at times it is very convincing. The fourth one is always in my bedroom. It sits on the edge of my bed and hums softly, sweet lullabies filling the air until I drift off to sleep. Sometimes it'll follow me down to the living room and coax me over to the couch, insisting that I close my eyes and rest. For some reason, the fourth one doesn't think that laying awake in bed for hours on end doesn't count as sufficient rest. Its music is like magic, and for the first time in weeks, I can sleep peacefully. The fifth one and the sixth one are the worst of the bunch. They just have a way of getting under my skin and making me want to explode. Going so long without feeling anything, with only numbness coursing through my veins, made me forget what it is like to be angry or to be jealous, to feel anything other than hopelessness and despair. The fifth one makes me smash plates in rage when thinking about how I haven't answered anyone's texts in days. The sixth one makes me cry over people who can actually feel the sunshine on their faces. The fifth and sixth one make me remember that I am not, in fact, a robot. And the seventh and final one keeps me company when I can't sleep at night, when the thoughts are too loud and there just isn't enough music to drown them out. Not even the creaking foundation of my home settling can distract me from the fear of failure, the belief of not being good enough, the anxiety of everyday life. The final one is quick on its feet, like a boomerang. It's always ready to fire back and counteract everything I have to say. Negatives are met with positives consistently. Its voice whispers in my ear so soft and eerie it sounds like it's in my own head. Like it wants me to believe what it's saying can truly come from within. Sometimes I almost wish they wanted to just scare me out of my home rather than act as counselors I never wanted to see. But sometimes it's nice to be reminded that it isn't always as dark as it seems. So at the very end it has a tag and it says a depressed guy moves into a haunted house with seven demons, each corresponding to a deadly sin. They're trying to help him get back on his feet. Lulu wants to be in the video again. Say hi. Say hi. Um, but I was so, oh God, would you quit? But I was so glad I was able to read this for you guys. 
when I read this story, it really kind of touched me because um, I know several people that struggle with depression. So I know how hard it is to do some of the things that are mentioned there in that story. And I'm really glad that um, Drunk on Writing was able to write something like this. Um, and I hope that any of you guys are struggling with depression, that you're reaching out to people. Bless you. That you're reaching out to people to get some help. Um, because it is a struggle. It is a, it is a real struggle and it's really hard to get through it. But I have faith in you guys and I know you can do it no matter what it is that you're facing. But that is all for today. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Um, if you know anybody else that would like this video or might need to hear this video, then um, go ahead and share it. If you have any ideas for future videos, um, you know, maybe short stories that you have or challenges that you want to see, questions you want to ask, go ahead and leave those in the comments. If you like what you see and want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in Monday's video. Or maybe Wednesday's video. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to post this. <laughs> but thank you guys and bye!